Hi, I'm Anna Greenland and I'm an organic vegetable grower and I love using herbs and wild plants to support my well-being. And I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to our key workers and to the NHS staff who are doing such an incredible job at the moment. And this video is a little way of um, saying thank you and helping to support you in this time. I'm going to show you amid the nettle patch three ways of using nettles um, to support your well-being. So a tea, a tonic for our hair, which I think I could definitely do with at the moment, and a soup as well. And we're probably all used to avoiding nettles a little bit from being stung so many times as a child. Um, but they are one of our greatest native plants. They're something to be revered. They've got huge nutritional properties and they are plentiful and they're free. Um, so join me while I harvest them. And there's a few key things to remember before you do any kind of foraging. Obviously, make sure that you know exactly what you're picking. So identify your plant properly. Um, there's lots of great foraging books out there. Nettles, it would be pretty hard to get that wrong, but, but do check if you're not familiar with them. The second thing to consider is where you're picking from. So I probably wouldn't pick from somewhere that I know that my dog regularly pees or other people's dogs. Um, I'd avoid picking by the sides of fields that are getting sprayed a lot. So somewhere as, as wild as you can get really and as untouched as you can get. The third thing, which is really important, is that wild plants support so much wildlife. So you don't want to go in there and crop loads and loads of stuff and not leave anything behind for all the insects and the pollinators and the birds. Um, there's my dog right on cue. Um, nettles support um, over 40 species of insects. So they're, they're really, really valuable in that sense. And lastly, with nettles, it's important that you wear gloves because obviously you're gonna get stung. I've seen some foragers just picking them. They've got the, the skills and the tactics to be able to pick them without, but I've never really fancied trying that myself. So I'm gonna don my gloves. And with nettles, you just want the first two or three sets of leaves at the top of the plant. You don't wanna rip it out by its root. Um, this time of year, they're nice and fresh. Um, as you get further into the season, into the summer, they can get a little bit woody um, and I would avoid those. If you've got a garden and you've got some nettles, then I would definitely encourage, you know, keeping that patch active. You can cut them back and you'll get a second flush, um, but they are at their best when they're nice and fresh and they haven't got too, too leggy and old. So here goes. So you're looking for something a little bit like that. Don't worry about taking the stems, uh, the leaves off the stems, because the stems will just cook down as well and just add into, if you're making a soup, add into that. As I look at this patch, I can already see loads and loads of useful herbs. We've got cleavers in here, um, which I use to make a sort of spring tonic. We've got hawthorn, which is a lovely herb to support the circulatory system and the heart. There's some elder. Um, ivy which is not edible for us but great for insects um, so just in this small little patch it's incredible how much supportive activity is going on in the herbal kingdom the first thing i'm going to show you is how to make nettle tea and that's probably the simplest way that you can use nettles to harness their benefits it's so quick and it's so easy and i guess we want to know what are the benefits. Um, so nettles mine their roots down really deep into the soil and so they're really mineral rich, um, which is one of their benefits. Um, they're also high in vitamin C and a host of other vitamins. Um, and so they're really good as an overall sort of tonic for making the body vital. I have to say, if you can hear gurgling in the background, that's my daughter, she's six months old and uh, so I've got to have her in the background of these videos. Um, but for a tea, um, it's, it really couldn't be simpler. It's just a small handful of nettle. You don't have to get too hung up on quantities. Um, so three or four sprigs, shove it in your teapot, um, or even if you've just got a mug, you know, a few sprigs in a mug, um, and then you pour in your hot water. And with all herbal teas, it's really important to remember to put the lid on the pot or if you've got a mug, um, then cover over it with a plate um, just to stop all the volatile oils um, that are beneficial escaping. Um, I actually smashed the lid to this teapot, so I'm using a plate here as well. Um, and that I will use to 
it's used to infuse or leave to infuse um, for probably about five minutes as I do with all my herbal teas um, and then drink it and you could potentially um, if it's a really hot day put it in the fridge to cool down and have it as a more of an iced tea um, and another thing is when you're harvesting herbs and using them in teas it's quite nice to have a second brew or a second infusion just using it once is almost wasteful so once you've drunk all that liquid pour on some more hot water and go for a second infusion it'll taste slightly different um, but you'll still get benefits out of it so my tea's been infusing for five minutes and I'm actually going to pour myself a cup while I show you the next thing which kind of links into the tea anyway so look at that lovely lovely green colour so you can just pass it through a tea strainer and pour yourself a nice big mug. So that's the herbal tea with nettles. And then next up, I'm going to show you how to make a nettle and rosemary hair tonic. And this is something that I found really beneficial actually, that my hair is the bane of my life. My husband will tell you that I um, don't stop going on about it. So um, I've all, I'm always on the hunt for something that's going to help my hair. And this is really great. Um, and I use it instead of a conditioner. So I'll shampoo and then I'll wash the shampoo out and then pour it over my head as a sort of a rinse. Um, and then you leave it in, you don't rinse it out. Um, and you might wonder if you're going to end up stinking of vinegar because there's apple cider vinegar in it, but you really don't. You smell it a little bit as your hair's drying and then once it's dry, um, you don't smell the vinegar at all. It's, it's, it's really quite a pleasant smell. Um, so it kind of ties into the tea um, in that you're basically making a herbal tea um, that you end up pouring over your head. So you do an infusion. Um, so you take, you don't have to use rosemary, but it's quite a nice addition. Um, if you've got it in your garden anyway, and a lot of people do. Um, a couple of um, handfuls of rosemary sprigs. You put in a, a two litre jar. So chuck that in. Um, and then gloves on again. Um, a few handfuls of nettles. And why is this good? Well, we know that the nettles are rich in minerals, so that's nice for our hair. Um, rosemary improves circulation to the scalp um, and both herbs help to support, um, you know, in terms of dandruff. Um, one thing I should have said actually as I'm, as I'm sort of putting these in, um, one thing to remember when you're using any kind of wild plant or even just plants that you're picking from your garden in things like this, um, you want to allow little insects to escape before you start um, plunging them into hot water. So um, these had quite a few little aphids on them. Um, so I gave them a really good shake um, and then I did give them a wash. Um, but if it's things like little beetles and things that you don't want to wash away, then you could just leave your, your nettles or whatever it is, the flowers you're harvesting um, on the side and just let them escape a little bit before you start making preparations with them. Um, so yeah, shoving my nettles in. And then I'm going to take a litre of water, hot water, um, and I'm going to pour this over. This is, a, this is boiled quite recently, um, but it's not straight out of the boiling kettle into the glass um, jar because that would potentially crack it. Um, so you could use like a Pyrex bowl or something to do your infusion in if you're worried about um, the glass cracking. So, about a litre. And then I'll put my plate on top. So you could potentially leave this to um, infuse overnight if you wanted a really, really um, sort of rich infusion, um, really potent. Um, or you can let it rest for maybe 15 minutes or so if you want to use it straight away. Um, so I'll let that do its thing. And then it's just a question of straining it out and adding the apple cider vinegar which is really good for balancing the pH of your of your scalp and of your hair. Um, so we'll let that do its thing and come back to that. In the meantime, let's talk about nettle soup. Now, again, this couldn't be easier. Um, all you need are a couple of medium sized potatoes or one big potato, a carrot, um, maybe a celery stick, one onion, a few cloves of garlic, uh, some stock, a litre of stock. So that could be chicken stock or it could be vegetable stock. 
um, 50 grams of butter, a little bit of olive oil and a few handful of, handfuls of nettles. So really, really simple. Um, I actually haven't got an onion, I've run out. Um, so I've doubled up on garlic a little bit. Um, but I'm just gonna peel these spuds, peel the carrot. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll cook down, normally if you were using an onion, you'd cook down the onion a little bit first in, in the butter um, and then add in the carrot um, and then the garlic and the potato and then you cover it over with your stock um, and you let it all cook down probably for about 10 minutes I would say. Um, season it and then right at the last minute um, with a couple of minutes to go add in your nettles um, and you can literally just bung them in and they cook down really quickly the nettles you don't have to cook them for too long and then all you do is blitz it all up you can add in another little knob of butter if you want to um, and you're done um, so this is a really good really quick little soup that packs a punch in the nutrition stakes um, that you can go and harvest you know I, I found at the moment we're not doing very many shots we're trying to sort of get quite a lot um, of shopping as we as we go when we go to the supermarket every two or three weeks um, so I reach a point where I'm starting to run out of fresh green stuff so the roots and things will, will last but you know fresh fresh uh, greens don't tend to go the distance so actually you know being able to pop outside and gather a few nettles um, is a really nice way of bulking up on your greens. Um, so sorry about the babe, <laughs> she's really going for it. So I'm going to squash these garlics. I love garlic and again it's another one that's very good for us. So I always tend to put in more garlic and things than I actually need just because I've got a bit of a bit of a taste for it. Actually being outside is perfect because I can just go and stick these in the compost heap. My husband in lockdown has become completely obsessed with the compost pile which I've um, showed him how to start. So I'm just going to go and chuck these on there. He'd love me to show you this because he's so proud of it. Look it's just a few pallets banged together. Um, Ideally you'd have three bays so you could keep turning them into each other but that's going to do us for now. Chop the garlic up a bit. Chop the carrots. Where's my dog? Big. Biggie. Come here. He loves the ends of carrots so you can have a little, little snack. Come here. Come on. thing actually while we're out here um it's really nice to well I, I love using edible flowers to decorate things but also because they do have nutrition benefits of their own so um daisies i've been using a bit at the moment as sort of um a nice anti-inflammatory um herb so i'm going to go and pick just a few daisies that can be used as a garnish on top of the soup Okay, last up while we're outside, I'm going to finish off the herbal tonic. I've actually forgotten my sieve, which was a bit of an error. So I'm going to try and pour this out using the plate, which could go disastrously wrong. Um, let's give it a go. So that's got a few bits floating in it, which won't be great to add to your hair. But if you use a sieve and a muslin even lining the sieve, then you won't get any bits in it. And then I'm just going to pour in my 50 millilitres of apple cider vinegar. This is raw apple cider vinegar, um, so you get more benefits. Um, and let's just measure that out. A bit of grass. This is natural beauty products. And then we add in our apple cider vinegar. And then that's it leave it to, to cool down even more if it's still a little bit warm um, and then you can use that to bottle it up and take it up to the shower with you as I say shampoo your hair and then just pour it over your head after you've washed out the shampoo um, if you get the vinegar in your eyes it does sting a little bit but it's not going to do any damage just give you know give your eyes a really good swish with water but 
try to sort of cover your eyes and then tip your head back and do it that way. And I've found in the past, when I do an overnight infusion with the rosemary and the nettles for this, um, when you pour in the apple cider vinegar, you get this incredible sort of red colour coming through. It's like a sort of an alchemy that goes on. Um, this hasn't been, for the purposes of this video, infusing um, all night, so you're not seeing that colour change. Um, if you've got dark hair, this is really good um, because it kind of really enhances the brown. If you've got blonde hair, if you use it over a long period of time, you might find that it starts to slightly um, take the edge off your, of your blonde locks. Um, so if you, are, um, if you are blonde, then a herb like chamomile um, long term is really nice because it tends to brighten blonde hair. Blonde hair. The hair tonic doesn't have a long shelf life, so bottle it up and use it within 24 hours. I'm now heading inside to make my soup and plate it up for lunch. And then the little daisy flowers. This is our common, common daisy here in the UK. They don't have particularly incredible flavour. The slightly kind of sour and lemony, um, but they certainly make it look pretty. There we are. So that's nettles three ways. Um, and all that remains to say is once again, thank you so much NHS key workers, so grateful. And I hope that one of these tickles your fancy.